Hace la diferencia por los próximos 10 años al llenar el censo del 2020. El censo influye en los fondos federales para las escuelas, hospitales, servicios de emergencias y muchos más. Tenemos que ser contados para que nuestras voces se escuchen. Visita 2020census.gov diagonal ELC y llena el censo hoy mismo. Dale forma a tu futuro. Empieza aquí. Empieza aquí. Hi, everybody. I'm Brooke Berry. I'm the Director of Communications and Marketing for the City of Indio. And we are broadcasting live on the city's Facebook page as well as the YouTube page to have a discussion about Census 2020 and how to get people involved in the process. Let me introduce the folks that we have here right now so that you can see them all. I'm going to start uh, with me, right? And then we'll go clockwise around here as we have them right now. So we have a uh, Jim Curtis, he's the community services manager for the city of Indio. We also have Lupe Ramos Amit. She is a council member, longtime council member, former mayor of the city of Indio. Uh, underneath her on your screen right now is Ben Guitron. He is, I have his information right here, Ben. Okay, administrative officer for the city of Indio's police department and also we have council member Wayman Furman. So throughout this broadcast, we're looking for you to ask us questions, to uh, give us uh, ways and suggestions for how you think that we can increase sense of participation and also give everyone a bit of an understanding of how the process works, what to expect when they see the census papers come to their door and the sense of how it's a safe and secure process. So let's go around and maybe have everyone um, introduce themselves and explain about the efforts that they are making uh, to do this. Jim, you want to start? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Jim Curtis, Community Service the City of Indio. Um, it, I, I just want to start off by saying it's so easy and it's so simple and so quick to fill out the census form. It really, really just took a couple minutes to get it done. So um, I encourage everyone to do it. It helps us, uh, not just Indio, it helps the, the whole Coachella Valley and, and the funds that can be brought in. So I encourage everybody to do it. We are, uh, we as community services manager, we really are trying to want to get out there and help people if they have questions on it. Um, we are trying to set up something called an MQA, which is a mobile question assistance location. So we're going to have a couple of those probably throughout the uh, throughout the city on some places that we need them. And hopefully those will be inside and out of the heat and out of the humidity. So it's a little more comfortable doing it. And uh, we just want everybody to do it. We just need to, to get it done and have everybody be counted. It's very important. We do have someone from the U.S. Census that's on the phone right now, too. She's trying to connect. She's having uh, trouble with her uh, devices. So I see that you're there, Lupe Camacho from the U.S. Census. And when you're able to get uh, your mic or your camera up, we'll make sure that we bring you into this because we want to make sure that everyone um, can get the information straight from you about um, how to participate. Um, Council member Lupe Ramos and me, uh, you and I spent some time together yesterday and we talked about some of the particular neighborhoods in India where the participation rate is a little bit lower or in some cases considerably lower than in other places. Um, why don't you talk to that a little bit? I think she's muted. I think you're going to have to unmute your mic on your end there. I'm sorry about that. But we discussed and what we noticed on the census track map is that our northeastern portion, which is located just east of Gulf Center Parkway, has one of the lowest response rates for that whole region um, in the city of Indio, under 47%, I think it was. So we really need to make an effort to reach out to those new homeowners because those are basically new homes with the exception of the Coronado Gardens mobile home uh, community, which is a senior um, community. And just uh, share with them how easy it is to go online and fill out the census. It's four simple screens. All you do is enter your personal information and how many are in your household. All this information is kept strictly confidential, so there will be no sharing of the information. But the throughout the community. When the federal government um, allocates funding to specific regions for, for specific programs, it's based 
on the census count. Regardless of how much we've grown, which now we're close to 100,000 in population, if we don't respond to the census, each individual that does not count, that has not been counted, equals $10,000 in funding that could have come to the city. So we really need to focus, if you know anybody in that region up there in the Gulf Center area where there are basically new homes, a lot of uh, new residents that may have come in from out of town, we encourage you to reach out to them. And if they don't have access to a computer, then direct them to City Hall and we'll have someone reach out to them to make sure that they are counted. I think that that's really good information. I think what you're seeing right here uh, on the right side of your screen is the city of Indio participation rates. This is something that we can update uh, every day, every week. These are the latest participation rates and it looked across the board like 50%, 50%, 50% as if the, the needle isn't moving. But what we saw from week to week is about a half of a percentage shift. So, um, we are talking about very small amounts, but with a population of nearly 100,000 people, every uh, small bit does certainly make a difference. Uh, let me go ahead and stop the screen share right there. And um, Council Member Wayman Furman, you've really been doing some boots on the ground participation as well. Um, why don't you explain um, maybe some of the challenges you're hearing from people in um, getting them to participate? Well, I, I personally think that uh, some of the challenges we face in our community is um, lack of information of what the census is and what it's used for. Um, over the years, you would hear uh, census every 10 years, census every 10 years. But I think now we are really going above and beyond to explain what it is and how it affects our community in so many different levels and facets. Um, that's why you see two council members on this uh, 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 Chad, and you also see our uh, community service manager. You also see a PIO from our police department because it affects us on so many facets, especially now um, during COVID. Uh, we, we don't know what our future is going to look like, but we do know that um, the census is every 10 years and our government allocates funding for us. So how is that funding determined? Well, it's determined by a population count. And if we are, correct me if I'm wrong, I, I believe we're about 90,000 people here in Indio. And if you look at it and you start adding it up, you know, from uh, approximately $2,000 per person, and you multiply that, uh, that's some serious funding that we could be uh, getting and or losing if uh, folks don't um, uh, fill out their census. So I, I think it's incumbent to all of us to not only uh, get our, our family and friends to do their census, whether it's online, um, if someone comes to your door or it's over the telephone, um, but it's uncommon to folks like myself to really get out there and educate folks. And um, that's what I've been doing. Um, you know, it's this is important to me, um, as I know um, the challenges that we're gonna face ahead. Um, and, and in the two years I've been on council, uh, one thing I did learn is when you have a, a chance of some funding, you better go go get it, especially now um, as budgeting season is upon us and we have to really uh, uh, tighten our belts um, uh, per se, it was it becomes uh, uh, with with funding and budgeting. So um, this is important stuff. So I'm going to continue. Um, I told folks I'm gonna talk about census until I'm blue in the face or I grow hair. So, you know, I'm not gonna grow any hair anytime soon. <laughs> so um, I got my census sign up. I'm gonna be out giving out more flyers. Um, I've been working with staff. Uh, uh, Layla uh, Navar's uh, Navar been uh, great working with us. We've been working with folks from the Census Bureau. So um, it's gonna be a collaborative effort uh, amongst council and community members, our faith-based community, our police department, our, our medical folks. I mean, just look at now with some of the things our medical folks are going through with, with COVID um, um, and funding. So um, these, this funding uh, is determined by our census for our schools, our infrastructure, our hospitals, our, our public safety services. So this is important. Um, I, I could go on and on how, how this affects our community so much, especially a community that's grown like Indio. I mean, um, I, I have to say, um, I, you know, I've been on council for two years, but um, we've been set up 
with previous previous council members it, to be in a good position here in the city of Indio financially. So what you see now in, in the city, we're growing. We're still growing. We still have construction going. We still have infrastructure projects going. And um, we have to keep that momentum going. So um, this is part of it. So I just encourage everyone to to uh, educate folks and, and, and please do your census and, and you'll see me out there uh, even more. Thank you, Wayman. Uh, we just had someone else uh, who's going to be joining us in just a second. She's been our lead point person for the city. And as we introduce uh, Layla Nambar, she's our senior planner. There she is. And uh, Layla, you provided some great information for people that is up on indio.org slash 2020 census so that people can really um, understand uh, the questions that might be asked of them. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna put that up while you talk a little bit about some of the efforts the city has made, and maybe you can even address some of these things that are coming up as, as you see um, as you see them right here. So these are questions that people might be getting and why they might be a little bit concerned about why do they have to answer these things? Sure. So uh, I am Leila Nambar. I work for the city of Indio. It is my honor to work for the city of Indio, actually. Um, and uh, yes, so I just wanted to say um, the census information or the questionnaire that people, when they go online, they complete. It is very safe. It's just to find out what is the population of the city. So this information is very confidential. It cannot be used for anything else. So it is completely safe. We have information in our website, which Brooke, thank you for you being so such a a great partner with with us to put everything online so it is in spanish and english so everybody can go there and see um, how they can uh, complete their forms and then um, if there is any question again there are links there that they can go to the census website and then that census website has the information also, my telephone number and my a great colleague Gustavo Gomez's telephone number is, is on the website as well. And in all the um, signages on the, um, it is, it is, the information is also on the signages that we post on the, in the city and also on all the material that went to the households. So they can also contact Gustavo Gomez if they need a Spanish translation. So um, everything is there. We just want people to go online and fill out the, the information. And that way, if they complete that by September 30th, nobody comes knock on the door for uh, getting their information. And again, it is completely safe. It's just getting those information will be used for uh, funding for the city, for great programs like school, education, road, hospitals, um, and many others. And um, when they fill it up, uh, it just helps the community, the great community of the city of Indio. Um, ben, I don't want me to cut you off, but I want to make sure that we, we speak to Ben a little bit here. Thank you so much, Layla. That's, that's terrific information. And I know that people um, do have a lot of questions. And that contact information for Layla or for Gustavo, as she mentioned, is on indio.org. Uh, ben Guatron, you have been such an integral part of this community for so long. I'd like to hear a little bit um, about the reaction that you're getting or your thoughts about the census as well. And and if you can see it there, and I can even, um, you know, uh, zoom in a little bit. These are the, the rankings for uh, Indio as of today. And just pointing out some of these areas here that are darkest in orange. These are the areas uh, that have the lowest self-response rate. In particular, um, this one right here is uh, about 23%. Ben, ben, what are you thinking here? Well, I'm thinking, obviously, in years past uh, with the census is that the city has grown. Uh, we have a punchline here at the police department. We don't we look at the population and we we really down in our hearts know that we're over 100,000 people besides our beautiful festivals that come into the community. But that's really important. That's a very strong number for the city, uh, the city of over 30 square miles. There's no barriers for anyone within our community, whether a full time, long term or part-term, you know, as long as this is their residence, 
they can participate and help us. So I see that the numbers, we want to see more. Uh, the council members that are participating, uh, Council Member Rumbles, uh, Amid, and obviously uh, Mr. Raymond Freeman. It's, it's great to know that our leaders are involved because here we're all on the same page. This is important to our community. The agenda is helping our community more. Uh, we just uh, celebrated in this year is our 90th year. We're the oldest city in the valley. We're in the second seat of the county, and we need to show how strong we are, that the sky's unlimited. And these numbers that are coming in, we obviously know right away that our weakest point, that we need encouragement, we need your help, benefits your city, benefits your kids going to school, benefits your public right-of-ways, your, all your public services, helps your nonprofits within the community. We're the largest city with the most public services in the most private organizations to help our community and our neighbors. And so this is the time to step up. Take those 10, 15 minutes. If you're unable to fill it out and you want to fill it out, call our city staff. Go on, if you can't go online, ask someone that's computer friendly in your, in your family or your neighbor that you want to fill out that the important document. Uh, we're going to be going out as Jim Curtis out into the community doing outreaches, encouraging people to fill them out. Our police department is going to be using our volunteers to hit the, the areas that we see the weak responses. At the end of the day, every single person that lives in the city of India, whether you're young or old, is going to benefit. And let's go in the next 10 years because the next 10 years, guess what? We're 100 years old. So the next time we have this discussion, it's going to be census in 10 years from now. And we're going to be able to look back and say, we made a big effort and look at where we're out today. So your involvement is strongly encouraged. There's no language barriers because we have the people that speak language, predominantly Spanish, based on the makeup in our community. Um, and even other dialects that might come in, we have the ability to do those resources. So please take that time, tell your neighbor, tell your friends, your other relatives within the city, whoever you know within the city of India, that they haven't filled it out, they need to because it helps all of us. That's great information, Ben. Thank you very much. Uh, we actually find we got our guest. We were able to do this. Lupe Camacho from the U.S. Census is here now, and she's going to join us. And and Lupe, I'm really really glad that you're here. Uh, we have another Lupe now, uh, so that uh, you can explain a little bit about what people might expect and how this might change over the next couple of weeks as we get closer to that census deadline. Oh, we just lost her again. We're having a lot of problems there, but we saw her. She is here and she is listening. So if there are other folks that are listening right now and uh, they would like to um, be a part of this conversation, they would like to ask questions or comments, please do that right now. We know that we have about a dozen people who are watching live on Facebook right now, and we are able to answer your questions and your concerns in real time. So when um, when Lupe is able to get back there, the other Lupe, uh, we will definitely answer. And we actually have um, another person who's joining us right now, just popping in for a second. This is our city manager, uh, Mark Scott. We didn't get a chance to do a microphone check with him, but um, he has a very uh, resonant voice. So I'm sure that we'll be able to hear him one way or the other. Hello, Mark. Mark, you said to me at one point that literally the census is the most important thing that the city has going on right now. Absolutely. If you, and we're dealing with a lot of important things right now, COVID and the, and the budget problems that are caused by all of that. But if we don't get the census right, um, it undercuts our efforts for the next 10 years. Um, this is critically important to the city. It's critically important to the future of the city and to everyone who lives here. So yes, I'd say it's the most important thing. If we could just take a breath here real quick, I wanna show um, folks, these are a, a couple of the videos that we've been putting out. And if you'd like to have copies of these videos and distribute them on your own social media channels, uh, we'll put the link here so that you can do that as well. Because really um, what's important right now is maybe you have already filled out the census, but you know of other people who have not. And the goal is to let them know that it's safe and secure. So give me a second here. I'm going to cue this up and you'll see a little bit of what we're talking about. 
This isn't about today. This is about the next 10 years. But this is something you can do today. You can make a difference today by filling out the 2020 census. The census impacts hospitals, schools, and public transportation. The 2020 census counts everyone, whether you rent, own, or live at home, including roommates. Taking the census is quick and easy. It's only 10 questions. Shape your future. Start here at 2020census.gov. You guys have a good day. So what do you guys think there? What resonated with you? And uh, what can we do to further encourage people who have not participated to do so? Jump in. I think the message is clear. <laughs> the future of future generations is dependent upon this 2020 census. And by having the youth community involved in this video, I hope they reach that demographic because they're the ones that are really going to see the benefits from this 2018. Yeah, exactly. If I may jump in, also, um, uh, I heard from the uh, councilwoman and woman, Mayor Lupe Ramos Amu uh, since 2006 that the future is the uh, young generation. So we always, in all our plans, we, we take those uh, that generation in 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 um in our counts i should say so um the 10 years from now i guess all of us in on this screen except the council members will be retired so this is for the next generation and if you love your city and if you love your community so please fill up the farms get your neighbors and get your family to fill it up as well so um, I look at the city of India, I'm an immigrant, so the city of India gave me my very serious job, uh, they um, uh, counted on me, they trusted in me, so um, I look at it as my family, as my future, as my present, so um, if you um, are living in the city, please uh, look at your city as your family member and um, Try to fill it, fill your your um, uh, online census, and get the money that the community deserve for all the good programs that the city and the leaders of the city and the policy makers want to put together. To, so that would be a big help for us. So um, that's all I can say without getting too emotional. <laughs> Layla, I think having your experience and being able to share that with people who are watching right now is really, really important. And because we did just get another edition, we're going to grab Lupe Camacho from the U.S. Sense as well. She is here. Uh, nope, she's not here again. So uh, we're going to have to talk about this without her. But um, what you can see here uh, on the right is the, some of the census tracks that we were talking about. Hopefully, Lupe Camacho will be back there soon. And um, the real disparity in the rate of response um, to the census right now, this is an area uh, maybe Ben or uh, or um, Lupe Ramos Amit or Jim Curtis. Um, explain to me uh, or to the folks who are watching right now some of the challenges and what we can do to encourage particularly people in this area to respond. I'll jump in and just say that, I mean, that's an area where we're going to be, we're going to try to put a, an MQA at, I think maybe uh, Terra Lago Clubhouse, if they would allow us to go up there and I'll check on that to have that the MQA, the mobile question assistance trust in that area, people can come, we can help them fill that, fill that out, might have access to some computers that they can actually go on and fill that out. Again, as everyone on this call has said, um, 2020census.gov makes it so, so easy to get this done and it's so simple and so fast. It, it, the, the website is not complicated at all and, and, and you, can, you can fill it out in seconds and moments uh, and, and get that done for us to help in. And we, we can come up that area. I think we're gonna maybe do a, a, do a little boots on the ground as, as Councilmember Furman said and get up there and, and get out to those people and get them to, uh, to fill out the census. And Lupe Camacho is back here. Lupe, before you disappear from us again, uh, one of the comments that we're getting right now, and thank you for being here, is if one has zero knowledge of how the census works, the message is not clear. Can you address that?
Lupe Camacho with the U.S. Census. Are you able to hear us? Okay. So the question was, if no, if someone has zero knowledge of how the census works, the message is not clear. All right. Well, she figures out how to uh, unmute the mic and get that going, and we've lost her again. Um, which is a shame, but uh, let's show again that screen that we had um, and go back to, I think council member uh, Furman, you were about to say something about this area. Well, I said, um, you know, I, I think being that uh, some of that's gated, we can also, um, you know, at the entrance and ex ex exit points, um, do some um, flyers there, but to, to speak to the question um, about the census and to make it simple, it's a population count. And once we do a population count in our city, that's how funds are allocated from the federal government. Um, that's how we receive representation in House Representatives. Um, so our population determines a lot of factors of resources our communities get. And it affects us in all facets from public safety, infrastructure, um, hospitals and medical, and also schools. And that's most important, for instance, right now, uh, most of our, our youth are working remotely. And some of that funding, um, we, we don't know what our, our future is gonna look like, but funding could fund uh, uh, Wi-Fi access in some of our communities. It also could fund uh, laptops and school supplies. So um, uh, this is some important stuff. And so what I like to do, I like to break it up in, in, in two different sides. Let's look at India where we were 10 years ago and how much we've grown since then. You know, so what what could we look like in 10 more years? And this is gonna help us get there. And so, um, and you know, to, to make it simple, that's what the, the census is, is uh, generally uh, the purpose of, of the census. Layla, um, and you know what, I'd love that Mark Scott, city manager, if he wants to join, join at any time too. And, and some of the things that we're seeing here now on the other part of the screen is some of the questions that get asked in the census. So, um, you know, maybe it doesn't really connect with some people. Oh, the city gets money and it funds programs because the questions that they're asking appear personal but the questions are not personal they're simply to assess the the population at large and that's correct is we basically would like to or the census um uh, uh we intent is to find out the popul the true population of the city of India and also it will help with representation. So that's all it is. So there's nothing that I know there's some some uh, myth out there that this will be check your citizenship status or your residency status. That's not the case at all. It's just we would like or the census would like to know and the city would like to know what is their accurate population and how much money we can get for that accurate population for the great programs, uh, as everybody mentioned, such as um, education, roads, housing, healthcare, and and things like that but that we can get as a city from the federal government those are the monies that will come and will be directly used uh, toward the community and toward the betterment of community um so um if and again if there is any doubt on on why um, individuals need to complete their census. There's a lot of information on the city website, and there's also a lot of information on um, 2020census.gov. And that was my husband entering the room, which I told him, <laughs> don't do that, but um, then you work at school. You those things. It, it definitely happens sometimes. Uh, Mark Scott, as we sort of wrap things up right here, is there anything else that you'd like to mention about um, this importance and what we can do as a city to uh, encourage pop, uh, participation in something that's so vital to not just what we do as a city, but the services that people are, are able to have for the next 10 years? No, I don't know there's much to add. I think we've said it. The, um, I worry in a, in a city like India where so many people travel during the summertime um, that it's going to be hard to capture some of the people that are on the road. 
and uh, we have a September 30th deadline that we're shooting for. So um, it's it's appropriate for people to track down their neighbors if they if they're forwarding their mail or if they're doing anything else to look over their property. Make sure that they've also responded to the census because it has a definite impact on how much we're going to be able to serve our community uh, in the years to come. Indio's a phenomenal place. It's a great home. It's a great place for people to live. And more and more people are investing in Indio. They're, they're seeing the potential here. And um, if we're really going to take advantage of that potential, we've got to get credit for the people that are living here. Um, we don't have all of the uh, sales tax potential that some of our neighboring cities do, not yet. And um, in, in order for us to ever get there, we've got to really count the base right now. And so it's, it's incumbent on all of us to try to get our neighbors and our friends and make sure that they've actually done this thing called the census. Uh, it really is going to matter to us. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, we are, we're trying one more time to um, get uh, Lupe Camacho. I'm just going to add her to us so everyone can see that she's here, but we're having a lot of trouble with her microphone. It's real hard to troubleshoot once we're in the broadcast. So I'm sorry about that, Lupe Camacho. We will try and have you on at another time. And for those people who are watching right now, I wish we'd gotten a few more comments, but we want to try and do this again. And we want to try and invite members of the community on, uh, people who I'm going to call community influencers, like all the people who are here, also Benjamin Guitron, too. I want to hear from you uh, one more time again before we go, uh, really an institution here, to uh, to see you know what are the challenges people are having, uh, what kinds of concerns they have, what we can do. Um, to really, really get the word out. Ben, you want to add anything again before we sign off? No, absolutely. I think everybody here on the team has made a really good statement of need. And like I said, it's go to your friends, talk to your neighbors, other relatives within the city. That's what is unique about our East Valley. Everything from, from Mecca to Indio and the surrounding areas of La Quinta, everybody knows each other and the focus is in Indio because all the services are here. So this is an opportunity for encourage the residents, encourage them to participate in the, in the weak areas. I think it's also a challenge that, you know, that people are maybe not understanding. This is the time to just pick up the phone and ask. We're all here. We encouraging them. Um, like our council member said, our city manager, this is important for you. At the end of the day, the benefit is you. So those 10 or 15 minutes, the benefit will come back to you and make it a lot easier for those big decisions to be made when funding opportunities are there to make it a lot easier to be able to fund things that the public will benefit from. So this is the time and language is not a barrier. We have the ability to speak, like I said earlier, in Spanish and getting out there and teaching them and, and filling it out. It's important to all of us. And uh, 10 years from now, we'll be going through this again, but we'll be looking back and saying we did an outstanding job and, uh, and we'll celebrate 100 years. So we're all looking forward to it, especially me. I think that that's a great way of looking at it. It's it, We're very lucky as a city, and I can't believe this didn't occur to me right now, that uh, the census comes during our even years. So uh, yes, we'll be doing this again in our century year. And uh, I know when I put up these graphics here, sometimes it covers people's faces, but before we check out, uh, this is the most up-to-date information um, from the census website today on response uh, rates. And you can see there, a uh, little bit more in depth, uh, which particular areas are more challenged in terms of responding, uh, which ones, uh, this area in particular, north of the freeway, I believe this is Jefferson right here, um, has gotten a pretty uh, good response rate. It's in the 70, about 75% uh, compared to some of these other areas where it's more challenging. So if you know people who live within those areas and you can get them on board for uh, participating, I think that's something we're looking at. And one thing I was able to get from Lupe uh, via chat, she was mentioning um, the, uh, the particular, uh, it's called an 
MQA, right? And we actually set one up over the weekend at the first AME church in Indio in collaboration with Fine Food Bank for a food giveaway. And the MQA stands for Jim. Maybe Jim hopped out. Jim may have had to hop out right there. Anyone else? Mobile. Mobile questionnaire assistant. Yeah. Mobile, mobile questionnaire assistant. Assistant. And so these are um, basically mobile units that we're able to set up all over the city so that people who need assistance or have questions about answering the census, we can do it right there. And then, so if you'd like to host one of these, uh, perhaps in an area that you think uh, has high traffic, of course, we're still trying to be safe and observe all of those social distancing and COVID protocols at the same time. Again, another challenge of the census right now. But if you have a place where you think, you know what, I can pull people in, we can do this one on one and really make a difference. Uh, please um, feel free to uh, contact someone at the city and all that information is uh, once again, on the uh, city of Indio website that we just sort of revamped that uh, indio.org slash 2020 census. May I say may I add something? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. The thing is, um, the, the city of India historically has shown that we are very competitive and we win always. We are the largest city in the valley. We are the oldest city in the valley. We are the most populated city in valley. So I really want to be the highest self-response city in the valley. And this is my dream. And I, before I get very emotional again, <laughs> I love the citizen of the city of India to listen to me and the, as a civil servant and been serving the city and has the opportunity to serve the city for almost 15 years, which is probably less than Ben Gutron and Jim and uh, uh, Councilwoman uh, Amit. But please fill up your form if you need any help. Uh, myself and all the city staff are available here to help you with anything that you may need. So let us be, again, the most competitive city in the valley with the numbers in the census. Thank you. And I love city. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you. I wish that uh, we could, I have a question actually um, for, for Lupe, so maybe he can check, uh, Lupe Camacho with the U.S. Census, maybe she can respond here um, as well. Uh, if people um, do have, oh, she wanted to mention that the uh, U.S. Census is having a gift card incentive collaboration with RCOE and the County of Riverside. So uh, I think if you are signed up for those peach jar flyers through your school district, uh, Desert Sands Unified, uh, keep look, keep your eye out for a flyer so that you can see, uh, once again, the census is trying to generate a bit of um, enthusiasm through a gift card giveaway, an incentive. But I think the incentive is also $20,000 per year in funding for your community too. Mark, what are some things we could do with $20,000 right now per person? Um, $20,000 per person. Well, we've, we could use um, money for parks, cleaning up places in the city that need cleaning up, bolstering the youth programs, uh, bolstering our senior programs, um, paving streets. How about that? Uh, paving streets. There's just an endless number of things that we need to do. We need to fix up old aging infrastructure. We need to fix playgrounds. Um, we have so many ways that we can use this money uh, to make Indio a more livable community. And uh, we're counting on everybody to do that. This could be the only good thing that happens in 2020. So let's not let it go away. 
That's a that's a good way of looking at it. As we as we wrap it up, I'm gonna uh, play just one more video too uh, to show you that uh, you know we're serious about uh, outreach and uh, we're trying to do it as much as possible in multiple languages. So we have a staff that is speak speak Danish as well as English to answer any questions and uh, those folks that you see on your screen right now that are making themselves available uh, during a, a very busy day. I think everyone here would be happy to answer questions from anyone who had them about the safety, about the security of the census. I see Wayman Furman nodding his head a lot there because I know how involved he is in those sorts of things. So let me, let me just show you uh, one more video here uh, that the census is created and again if you'd like access to any of these videos uh, we have them available and i can also provide you a link in order to download them and share them on your own platform no se trata solo de hoy se trata de los próximos 10 años pero hoy tú puedes hacer algo tú puedes hacer la diferencia por los próximos 10 años al llenar el censo en 2020 el censo influye en los fondos federales para las escuelas hospitales servicios de emergencias y muchos más tenemos que ser contados para que nuestras voces se escuchen Visita 2020census.gov diagonal ES y llena el censo hoy mismo. Dale forma a tu futuro. Empieza aquí. Empieza aquí. Whether you speak English or you speak Spanish, I think the goal is to let everyone know that the census is a way for uh, people to let their voices be heard. And again, that doesn't mean because they're being identified individually, um, so there is safety and there is security, but just so that, um, that we're all adequately represented. We talk about money that comes back to the community, but it also means representation. Crickets there, I hope means that everyone is just agreeing. Well, I mean, I could keep going. You know, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic about the census. I'll just be honest with you. I, I wasn't really educated about the census until um, a little while ago. I, I remember Council Member uh, Lupe Ramos and me really brought this up to our attention. And I really started diving into it and seeing how important it was. And when we have organizations approach us about youth programs or or infrastructure projects and funding is scarce, this really uh, uh, brings it to the forefront of how important this funding is and representation is. And just knowing how many uh, 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 folks we have in our community. Indio is such a very beautiful, diverse community and, and that's our power. So I um, mean, yeah, I'm very enthusiastic about it and I'm gonna keep going and I'm looking to be part of a MQA over uh, on the side of my district and um, all around the city. So Lupe uh, Camacho is able to answer some questions even though she's doing it via chat right now. So just want everyone to know that this incentive for people that they'll be seeing uh, through their peach jar flyers is actually $20 from Stater Brothers, um, which is a lot of money, but a small investment when you talk about you know $2,000 per year to participate. She also, speaking to the security component of things, wants people to know that uh, the data is not shared with any other agency, state, federal, or otherwise. The data is not shared with ICE or the DMV or any other agency. So um, that is uh, something that people are, are worried about. And I don't know if anyone has heard particular feedback when asking people who say, no, I have not participated in the census yet. Uh, if those are reasons um, that they are maybe discouraged from doing so, they don't need to be. Um, ben, is, uh -huh, ben, is this anything you have run across? Did you were you asking uh, Ms. Lupa Camacho? Uh, I think she already answered, but Ben, is this something that you've heard or you have run across in your no, dealing with the community? I, throughout the community and even speaking to the people, the, you know, our Spanish speaking community, I think it's, it goes back to reaching out, reinforcing the, the necessity, explaining how simple it is to fill out. I'm not hearing that. That's not what I'm hearing. Um, I know it keeps coming up, but I mean, um, I've even asked my family members. Uh, I have a lot of Witrons in the Valley. I have uh, actually about 36 of them. And I've asked them, have you heard it from your friends? He goes, no, I, I think it's just flat out. They need to be explained. We need to do that outreach and reinforce it and explain the benefit out of it. Um, and uh, that's it. 
So one thing that uh, Lupe Camacho just uh, expressed is that one thing she has heard is that people may not participate because they're afraid to answer the questionnaire because of parking tickets or also because they have back taxes that they have not been filed, uh, that have not been filed yet. So that need not be a concern. That information is not reported to other agencies. Um, not something that you need to be afraid of. No, there's nothing about parking tickets or outstanding violations has absolutely nothing to do with it. I can see where people might think that it might have a connection with past due taxes because it comes in a way that's official. And that one probably makes sense. Um, if they do owe taxes, well, there's a different way to take care of that, but it's not through the Census Bureau. So um, it just helps, it helps their community, helps their city. And it helps in this case, India. So. Here is a last look um, at the most recent data from the U.S. Census. Again, uh, I'll, I'll plug that this information is all available on indio.org slash 2020 census. And so uh, if there are resources that you think would be helpful to put up on the city's website, uh, we want to be able to update it with relevant information. This shows you that our response rate is actually up to 50.3%. I know, Layla, you and I were talking about small victories because I was doing uh, the little the math here, and one month ago, we were at 48.8. So it's an increase of a percent and a half, but unfortunately, that deadline is approaching so we only have about five more weeks so if we increase only 1.5 percent every month uh that still leaves us far below uh the rate that we need to be at which is uh i would like to say let's get us up at least to what the uh, the average is for the country right and if you go to indio.org uh, 2020 census you will actually be able to see uh, what those rates are how they compare to other parts of, uh, of the Coachella Valley and how they compare to other parts of, of the country. In fact, we'll, we'll just uh, show a little bit of what it looks like here. So this is the revamped website. You can see Indio compared to the other desert cities. Uh, it's hard to see here, but this is Indio right here, um, Cathedral City and um, Palm Desert, Coachella, uh, Desert Hot Springs all have much higher rates. Uh, Indian Wells does have a lower rate, um, but um, there's a lot of valuable information. You can click to how you can look at uh, the census track by track. You can see how we're doing. You can see how we did compared to a month ago, and then also how we're comparing to the state of California, which is somewhere about 65% and the U.S. participation rate about 64%. So we still have a ways to go. That's correct. And as you said, the time is the essence. So we have till September 30th to get the online um, uh, form fill out. So that way nobody comes knock on your door. And then again, uh, we are the best city in the Valley. We should also show we, are, we will have the highest participation uh, in our census as well. It's a lot of money. It's for our community, for our future generation, for our education, roads, hospital, and everything else. I can um, I, I learned how to say it in Spanish. It's a shame that I don't know how to speak Spanish, but I learned it to say it. So, por favor, complete su censo en línea. And Lupe or Ben can correct me. I can say it in Farsi, please. Uh, no, please is English. I can say it in Farsi. Lotvan for So for Farsi speakers in the valley, which I know there's a lot of them. So just go there and then be proud of your community and fill it up and show everybody that we are the best city in the valley and probably the best city in the galaxy. Thank you very much. Uh, there was one a flyer that Lupe Camacho did send me earlier today that I, I tried to have available and for some reason it is not uh, showing up right now, but it's, uh, it's already actually on our website and it is about how do census takers look? What should you expect to see from a census taker if they come to your door? And in fact, I put a little bit of information of this on the website right now, which I will share, but how do you identify a census taker? 
And um, what you'll note is that they have to give their name, their photograph, they'll show a watermark on the Department of Commerce and an expiration date. And maybe this is actually the information that I put up here. Here we go. How to identify a census taker. So this is again available on uh, indio.org slash 2020 census. Um, thank you to everyone for participating in this discussion right now. We hope that it generates um, some enthusiasm. We hope that people get some ideas from this on how they can get participation rates up in their own community. And maybe you were looking at that map and you said, you know what, the area where I live has plenty of people participating. Um, I'm good. I don't even know where my form is. But you know what? Uh, the more people, oh look, and, and Councilman Furman there, I think that's a key there. You're doing it for your daughter and for everyone else. Why are you participating in the census? It's for the next generation as well as those of us who are here uh, right now. She'll be 14 in 10 years. <laughs> uh, and I, she'll be my age. I have a knock on my she'll, door too. Yeah, she'll be exactly my age right now, 14. Perfect. So thank you to everyone for participating. We'll just go through here one more time. Benjamin Guitron, Administrative Officer with Indio Police Department, Council Member Wayman Furman and his four-year-old daughter. Lupe Camacho of the U.S. Census Bureau. Hopefully we'll get her microphone figured out the next time that we do this. Um, Council Member Lupe ramos Amit, Senior Planner from the City of Indio, Leila Nanvar, Mark Scott, City Manager, and Jim Curtis, our Community Services Manager. So thank you to everyone. I appreciate your time. Again, if you have any comments, I have all the information here about how to reach out directly to Lupe or to myself, to Layla, and uh, we hope that this was helpful for people who are watching. Take care from the City of India. We'll talk to you later. Thank you, Brooke.